All aircraft have to comply with airspace constraints and traffic rules. Flights taking off or landing in the European airspace or crossing over it have to file a flight plan which gives the place and time of departure, the routes that will be followed and the destination. This principle applies to both civilian and military aircraft following instrument flight rules. Each aircraft is watched over by air traffic controllers who ensure that they fly in a safe manner. However, air traffic controllers can handle only a certain number of flights at once. When too many flights are planned at the same time and in the same area, the network manager intervenes to absorb this overload. This implies negotiating capacity, changing flight levels or suggesting alternative routes. If appropriate measures cannot be found, some flights have to be delayed. In the Network Managers Operations Centre, NMOC, people from all around Europe work 24-7 and handle more than 10 million flights per year, making them more predictable. Their work is essential to continuously improve flight efficiency, reduce delays and minimise the impact of aviation on the environment. Our airspace data management team assesses the potential impact of airspace restrictions on the network. Through information and data we receive on airports, routes and sectors in the air traffic control centres, we create a complete map of the air. This map is then shared with all users, such as the air traffic control centres, airlines and the military. Airline flight dispatchers and pilots also use this map to plan their flights. Once flight plans are ready, flight dispatchers send them to the NMOC. Our integrated initial flight plan processing system checks and validates these flight plans. The IFPS processes up to 36,000 flight plans a day Around 97% are handled automatically, some 3% of them contain errors and have to be corrected manually. Once ready, we send these flight plans to air traffic control centres so that they know what traffic they can expect. This planning process takes place well in advance and continues until 20 minutes before takeoff. The NMOC also runs day-to-day -day operations. Our teams ensure that demand matches airspace capacity. When this is not the case, they take appropriate measures to anticipate and minimise delays. Our pre-tactical team prepares short-term air traffic flow and capacity management measures six days in advance. They publish the timetable the day before the operations take place. Um, how long the they also simulate events which disrupt the network so as to see what effect they might have. No, so you will call me back later. Potentially disruptive events could include major sporting occasions, such as the World Cup and the Olympic Games, or industrial action, the introduction of new systems at air traffic control centres and large-scale military exercises. Our tactical flow operations management team works on balancing airspace demand with capacity in real time, managing air traffic flows all over Europe. We monitor traffic load throughout the day in constant contact with flow management experts located in more than 68 air traffic control centres. We suggest alternative routes to airlines to avoid bottlenecks. We post regular updates of the network situation on our network operations portal. In the NMOC, the aircraft operator liaison officers are our main point of contact for airlines. They help prepare the plan for the following day while working on daily operations. Uh, let me 
They give assistance to airlines, especially when rerouting is needed. Yeah, sure. Okay, see you now. Bye bye, bye bye. We at the Network Manager monitor the pulse of the European skies. We make plans for its smooth operation and react when parts of the network are in difficulty. We operate across the airspace of 43 states in an impartial and transparent manner. We share the most up-to-date and accurate picture of the network with air navigation service providers, airports and civil and military airspace users to help them run their business smoothly. We do our utmost to allow passengers to fly safely, on time and at the lowest possible cost to them and to the environment.